Well, good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be. Um, this can be as interactive as you would like for it to be, this conversation. Um, when I spoke with Dan, we talked about, okay, what would be good topics for the show? And there was all sorts of technical topics we could talk about, but um, one that's near and dear to my heart is customer intimacy. Um, the reason being is because uh, if you don't know what people need or what they seek to produce, it's very difficult to help them produce it. What is customer intimacy? Customer intimacy is knowing the customer's fundamental and specific concerns in a way that makes it possible for you to make them uncommon and superior offers. And so when we talk about that, we talk about fundamentally all business people need to produce revenue, profits, um, they need to do all of that fundamentally, but specifically, they have specific situations. They have markets they're after, they have concerns, they, they have a lot of things that are unique to their particular situation. And again, if we don't know what those are, then it's a little difficult for us to help them with those. And so what does that, what does that really mean? It, it means you can anticipate their concerns, their situations, such that you can help them to prevent breakdowns, take care of those concerns, and, and really produce their strategic outcomes in a way that takes care of them and makes your help very valuable to them. Um, and, and when I speak of valuable, I'm talking about if I have someone that I'm trying to get to help me um, and I have to tell them exactly what I want them to do, well, that's very costly for me. I, I, I mean, that limits the space they are for me. But if they know my business and can interact with me, that's a completely different situation. So why is that important? Well, fundamentally because we're human beings that are finite. So there's only so much that we can do on our own. We need very powerful networks to be able to produce the outcomes that we need. Our success depends on one another and and really the help that we can get and how effective and how strategic and how competitive that help is. When I work with someone who's a, a powerful ally, someone who's a, a great source of help, not only do I get their help, but the chances are they've helped lots of other people and they will have a great network that can also be brought to bear on whatever strategic situation I'm looking for. And lastly, as I alluded to earlier, if I have to think of every way that someone can help me, I'm limited to my thinking. But if they know my business situation and they know how to help me solve that business situation uh, through recurrence, recursion, reciprocation with one another, we will design things that we never could have on our own. So how does RBC do this? How does the company that I work with do this? We start with trust. Uh, trust, as we think about it, has to do with sincerity. Um, when someone says something to me, is that really what they mean, or do they have a backstory? Are they going to honor their commitments for as long as they need to in order for it to have it work out for all of us? Or are they going to justify betrayal if something goes wrong and it becomes difficult for them? Are they competent? Do they have the domain expertise to help out with whatever problem that they committed to solve? And are they reliable? Are they going to do everything that they need to do in order to take care of all their concerns so that they don't have a breakdown that has them betray my concerns? We do it through humble honesty. Um, I've worked with a lot of folks over the years who seem to have a hard time admitting when they don't have expertise in a particular area. And the result is that um, promises are made and we'll just worry about fulfilling on that later. Um, we've noticed in the product design and, and manufacturing domain, there's more and more and more companies coming into existence that make lots of promises but don't necessarily have the expertise or track record to back those up. So admitting, yeah, we, we do all these things, but this one over here, we go to our outside partners, our networks, 
we get their help. We know how to manage that help to produce the outcomes that you need. We build long-term relationships. Um, whenever you're in a relationship, you're investing in one another. Uh, you'll learn things that uh, will help you to work with one another more powerfully in the future, to anticipate uh, where people are really effective and where they may need more help through communication, coordination, production, what they need to learn. So through those long-term relationships, we amplify how we can help them. And most importantly, we, we really become a part of their organization, an extension of their organization. Uh, whether it be through capacity or capability that they don't already have, um, we're, we're working to basically be a, a network of help that they can tap into whenever they need us. So what's an example of that? And I'll, I'll end with this. We have uh, a particular situation with a customer where they have a, a very successful product that's in the marketplace, have some obsolescence issues. The product's been out there for a while, need some minor updates uh, to some features, and came to us and said, hey, can you help us out? But we really know this company. We not only know what they want to do with this product, we know what they're planning for future products, um, both on the capital side and the disposable side. So as a part of doing this project, we integrated in some of the features from the next line of products, um, a, new, a new market they want to go into, and enabled them, therefore, to move forward without actually having to execute yet another project to get into the marketplace to that new application. And we never would have known that to ask them those questions about, hey, would you want to include this as well because we're touching that part of the product. We're going to have to rerun VNV anyway. It would be a pretty minor incremental change. So what do you think? Should we, should we put this in there as well? We never would have known that if we weren't intimate with that customer. So to summarize, Customer intimacy really enables powerful teamwork. It enables us to be more than task doers. Uh, it enables us to be strategic parts of our partners' companies. They can count on us to, with our experience and the range of different situations we work in, to bring those to bear on their situations. Uh, in general, the competitor with the most powerful team is going to win, and therefore, Customer intimacy is a winning strategy and one that we employ at RBC. All right, Dan, you're back on time. <laughs>